Good afternoon everyone. Well I've got to tell you it's been one hell of a week and especially after we announced Emma Eros as our candidate for Hornsby and New South Wales state elections. I've listened to your comments and some of them weren't kind at all but I can understand your antagonism and I can understand why you were asking those questions. So today I'm actually here with Emma to answer your questions so we can get a better understanding of Emma and why she's joined the party One Nation and most importantly why she is a candidate for us in the March 23rd election. Good afternoon Emma. Hi Pauline, how are you? Good. Emma, we've, um, we've had a lot of comments about you coming on board as a candidate and, and mostly because you're a Muslim. Right. Over the years I've stood against you know, Muslims, banning of Muslims coming into the country, I've questioned their ideology, I can't stand extremism, and everything, uh, you name it, halal certification, um, multiple marriages, Centrelink payments, all these things, and I stand strongly by them. And I support everything you stand by because that is un-Australian. So hence the questions is, um, all right, first off, I, uh, let's go to the guts of it. Yes. Because they're, all they're saying is that um, Takia, yes. what's your opinion about Takia? And let me explain to everyone, Takia is that they will actually tell you anything, Muslims will lie to you, tell you whatever you need to know, just to get in your good books yeah. and then turn on you. That's right. I can't stand that word to care. As a mother with children, I teach my children not to lie and I practice what I teach. I think what the focus should be on is how about asking our major two political parties about the takia that they've thrown at us, Australian people. So I don't believe in the takia and I'm here to support and represent my country, our country, Australia. All right, you talk about your country. Let's, yeah. let's just talk about your background because yep. I think that's important. Australian born? Yes. Your parents? No, they immigrated here, migrated in the 1960s, give or take. From? From Lebanon. Proud Australians? I they think. are proud Australians and this is what they call home. The, then I say, okay, your background, what is it? You're, and I've, you've told me, yeah. you're a licensed plumber? That's correct. Licensed plumber, I'm a mother, I'm a businesswoman, I, hard working Australian. That's my background. I was Australia's all I've known. Just tell me your um, beliefs about um, Islam. You said about Turkey. Um, you're a strong Muslim. Well, you, well, are you? Well, look. Uh, explain that. Do you know, my, that's what people want to know. Yeah. Well, my family, we were taught to have faith, to believe in our faith, not to be invasive on other people, to work hard to respect all people's culture, way of life, and that's that. None of this extremist thinking, radicals out there that our government has allowed to grow. So, okay, tell me your opinion about the Grand Mufti. Well, the Grand Mufti, as far as I've heard, he can't speak English. And some people would say, I have no right to speak out about Muslims. Well, you know what? Obviously, a Grand Mufti or any other Mufti isn't helping the cause. No one is speaking out, so I will speak out. If I see something that is un-Australian, I don't care what you believe in, I'm going to speak out. And you speak out very similar to Imam Tahiti, don't you? Yes, and he's copped a lot of slack too. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So in the end, as far as I'm concerned, again, I don't care what religion anyone is. I care what is happening in Australia. That's what I care. I care about the future of my children. I care about the future of their offspring. Bottom line, that's all I care about. And it's... We need to fix that. Yeah, we do. All right, I've got a couple of questions here, and people yep. have actually, I've encouraged them to send questions through, and, yep. I, and people need to, okay, this one's from um, McMaster, Aaron, Aaron McMaster. What will she do to stop child brides in Australia? Do you believe in mandatory jail time? Yes, I absolutely believe in mandatory jail time. I actually believe that if they're not an Australian citizen and they're a kiddly fiddler pedophile, because that's what you call them, they need to be deported, deported back. We, we don't want pedophiles. I have a daughter. I don't want a bloody pedophile around my child. So no place here at all. And that's exactly how I feel uh, I'm, it. Yep, I'm totally against this underage marriage. Linda um, Fracas, um, has Emma ever read the Quran cover to cover? Yes, I have. Does she believe that it is the actual words of Allah 
as told to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel. I believe the words of Allah have been translated to, to I suppose, please the, the extremist thinking. The translation has lost its way. Over 1,400 years. Absolutely. 1,400 years ago, it's like Chinese whispers. It's, gonna, it's bound to change, isn't it? And how people interpret it. Mm -hmm. um, Karina Rochelle, if Emma married a Catholic, why would she not be using the Bible to be sworn in? Okay, well, I am with a Catholic. And um, the Bible, I don't want to be insulting any Christian or Catholic out there. I have sworn on under a Bible in court before. However, um, just to make clear, I will not be, if, if I got elected, I would not be sworn in under the Quran because this is not an Islamic state. Simple. So it would be an affirmation. Very good. People must be, um, I know it's been a big thing and I don't believe that people should be sworn in under the Quran. It's either the Bible or an affirmation. And um, so you've made it quite clear. Yeah, you're it's not going to be born. It's not an Islamic state. Quran. It's not an Islamic state, so I will not be sworn in under a Quran. Rosemary um, Trudeau. So she wants to ban the burqa. Does she also want to ban child brides, acid attacks, honour killings, bombings, beheadings, and all other evils of Islam? Absolutely, it has no place in Australia. This is not the Australia that I know and we don't want it here ever. You did um, answer about child brides and honour killings yep. and, and it does, um, you know, yep. some interpretation under the Quran, it does yep. say about honour killings and, and it says stoning of the women. Yeah, and, and 1400 just, years ago, zeitgeist yeah. era is just, you know, what was permissible perhaps back then sure as hell not permissible today and it's sure as hell not permissible in Australia where we, there is a rule of law. And all uh, Muslims that come to a non-Islamic country have to abide by that rule of law and its covenant. Okay, I want to ask you a question. I see these um, imams and leaders of the Muslim faith come out and say, well, those women deserve to be raped. You know, the, look at the way they were dressed. And, um, you know, they're just meat out there for them. You, How do you feel about that? Oh, look, it pisses me right off because, you know, again, I blame the, 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 the two major le parties, Lib Labour and Liberal. They've allowed these people to voice their hatred and just think it's freedom of speech. But yet when somebody criticises that, they get squashed their freedom of speech. They, that's, you know, against their appeasing. Um, it is wrong. Again, no place in Australia. I'm not a piece of meat. My children aren't a piece of meat. These people should not be here. People like that, that have this thinking, should be deported. All right, then let's go back to the burqa. Yes. Why do you want to ban the burqa? Well, for number one, the burqa has no place in Australia. If we have to take our balaclava off, our helmet off, our caps off and sunglasses off, then we want equality. Remove the burqa and that's equality. It's a security risk. You've got 13 other nations banning the burqa. We need to move in with the times and it's just, it's not Australia's way. Then, tell me then, you're with a lot of um, Muslim women. You, you come across them, Yes. your time here, how do they feel about the burqa? Do they feel it's suppression? It's, it's, so, it's, what, so what it's, is it? Why do they wear it? Um, why do the Muslim women actually wear it? Now that niqab yeah, is the, the full cover, yeah. Yeah, with just the eye yeah. showing, the burqa is the full covering and you can't see their yeah. eyes at all. I've had women give me excuses where, oh, I don't have to do my hair, lazy. I have women, you know, give me excuses where they don't have to wear makeup. Again, lazy, it's optional, who cares? Um, there are lame excuses, but then you have women that are probably forced. We don't know exactly. We don't know that side of things, but I just know that in this country, we have no place for that. Australia wasn't made to segregate and, and wear this misogynist garment. So do you believe that people should have a right to wear whatever they want to in this country? Just show your face. Show your face. It's very important. And that's why a lot of the other countries, and that's what I've been saying, a lot of the other countries are banning the burqa yeah. because it's better assimilation. Those people are actually assimilating into the country, being part of the country. That's right, you've got to, you want and equality, you've got to get out there and integrate uh, into society. You know my, my view about it is I think that a lot of these women would li dearly love to get rid of the, the burqa, but they've been suppressed by their, the male counterparts yeah. in their family well, you have, to wear it. You have some that will suppress them, I suppose, maybe because she's going out there working, getting educated, and maybe for him it's, you know, can't have that. This misogynist attitude comes out. 
There's, I'm sure there's a lot of stories like that. And then you have, unfortunately, some women who truly believe that, you know, they want to wear it for themselves. But, you know, I'd like to know, do these women truly work and do they contribute to society? You know what I say, Emma? You know, by wearing the full burqa, you've made yourself unemployable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who's going to employ them no. if they're wearing the full burqa? No, no one's going to employ them. So, it's intimidating. So then, so then they, they are... If they're not supported by their husband who's working, yep. then we, the taxpayer, Tax are, are supporting, them. supporting them. Exactly. So then I'll go to my next question. Yep. What do you think about multiple marriages? Oh, God. It is illegal. It should not be in, in Australia. My gosh, taxpayers' money should not be going on second, third, fourth wife, as far as I'm concerned, whilst they're sitting on welfare. It's not right. I don't agree with it. It is damn bloody illegal in Australia, and the government needs to do something about that. It's a big scam. I... I totally agree with you but they don't know what to do about it because you've got these imams that are actually registering them marrying them and that it's not putting in the paperwork yeah. that they're actually se you second know, third or fourth yeah. wife yeah. and it's we the taxpayer are actually paying, paying for that for what do you think of the the idea and this policy is that any single woman out there single not married i'm not talking about break up marriages yes. with two or three kids that the yeah. wife is uh, has the children but any single woman out there if you have one child then we support the child. If you have more than one child, then there's no further payments. I agree to, with you. To, to, you know, the taxpayer should not be yeah. funding any more than one child. Yeah. If you cannot support that child, so then it covers multiple marriages or women out there who want to have it because they, it's a lifestyle yeah. for them. So we'll have all these kids. And I figure, well, if, and I've spoke to the government about this, one child, single mother, any more than that, you actually fund the child the child yourself, exactly. not the taxpayer. Exactly, and then this way you'll find out that they have another child after a year, but they're somehow still separated. So it's a good way, I think it's a great policy. And you've also got housing commission, haven't you? So yeah, they housing have all these commission. marriages, then they have the kids, yeah. and they go for house That's commission. That's right, we're paying we're... for this, Pauline. We're wor taxpayers are working their asses off for, for a bunch of freeloaders, and then they say, oh, you know, it's not just Muslims. There's, there's a lot of scammers out there. Yeah. But regardless, I don't care what their faith is. Enough's enough. People need to just realise what this country is about, and it's not about freeloaders. Not you know, it's hard paying tax workers are yeah. contributing to a lot of this. I had an interview with the Imam Tahiti, and he said to me, "Do you know what the biggest mosque in Australia is?" Yep. And I said, "No, mm. what?" He said, "Centrelink." Absolutely. And yeah. he said one fellow actually bought um, three houses on sending link yeah. payments because of his wives yeah. and the kids that he had. And, and that's what we're paying for. And where's our government? Asleep. Asleep to just... Well, they're reluctant mm. to do anything because they don't want to tread on toes. They don't know how to handle it. Mm. So they don't want to upset anyone. And because the Muslim population is growing in Australia yeah. and we are going to have to pay for it yeah. if we don't take control of it. Mm. Halal certification. Money-making scam. Big business it is. It's, it's a money-making scam. That's all I'm going to say. It's just wrong. All right. How would you actually... How do you Regulate the damn thing. It needs to be regulated. Government regulated. We need to understand where this... A lot of people are concerned that the halal money certification is going abroad and they have right to be because I think one case not long ago, money was gone to a terrorist organisation. So in order to not have this, it needs to be regulated. Right. People say that we need it for the product to go to Islamic countries for export. Um, my policy is it should be controlled by the government. We yep. don't have these certifiers out there and it could be anywhere between 2022 that we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching a program there, Current Affair, and they said, they had the, the certifier on there and he said, you Australians are stupid. You've actually paid for my wife's shoes. Yeah. So it's so actually come from Indonesia to they're saying who the certifier must be yep. and they're getting if not millions, they are getting millions of dollars out of the taxpayers. Mm. So it's a one nation policy. We want to, to actually get rid of halal certification, mm. put it in the hands of the government for export, yeah. and they should be controlling well, it. I think so. And not these businesses paying, you know, um, 40000 or over a couple of hundred thousand or a small business, yeah. $2,000 a year, yeah. we're paying to the halal certification. Yeah, well, I think it should it's be. It's an insult to the Australian people. It absolutely is. Absolutely is. And, you know, I've got to do I've got another, uh, Ross Day, Ross Day, um, why didn't Emma join the Australian Muslim Party? Oh God, because uh, it's not about religion or my faith, it's about my country, it's about our country, it's about the way it's going, it's about a lot of things. It's, it's, I, I wouldn't join any other party that doesn't represent the Australian people.
All right, you've got all these parties out there. Yeah. You've got the different parties. Mm -hmm. Why me? Why One Nation? Yeah, well, Pauline, I've been watching you for years now, and you seem to be the only party that is solution-driven, that is listening to the people's grievance out there. It's, it's focusing on what's wrong with this country, and that is our energy prices, our water, our infrastructure, law and order, which is bloody lacking in this country. Uh, a lot of the things that you support, your policies are out there, I support them. And that is why I don't want to support a fear-mongering party that's based on religion stuff, because you're, you're, you've got solutions for everything, and that's why I support One Nation. Have you been approached by any other political party to join them? Uh, no, because if you follow, if you look at my Emma Eros public figure page, I speak out against all the stupidity that is allowed, and they've come from a certain party. So, yeah, I, I'm happy to mention most of them, but I think you're aware it's all of them. I mean, what I will actually then say is, um, when I see the terrorism yes. and I see innocent lives lost and these attacks that happen in Australia, I get angry. So do I. I really do. And I don't blame you, Pauline, and I don't blame any non-Muslim person out there being upset. I'm just appalled as the next guy because this is wrong. I don't care about their, you know, what they're trying to prove. It's, it's just sickening. It's murder. It's wrong. It is not religion. It's just barbaric. It's just horrible and I don't want it in this country. So, and I get upset. I feel like every time I, you know, speaking out and trying to do the right thing, I get 10 steps, taken 10 steps back because of some... You've had threats against you, haven't you? I have. I've, I've had heaps. But you know what? Sticks and stones. I come from the era of sticks and stones and, and I don't care of all the threats and all the words. They don't hurt me. They will not hurt me because it's wrong. I've got children. Again, I want to look after their future. Another big thing is um, this week uh, is the interview that you did with Marlo. Yep. You got to, I've got to ask you yeah, for it. Please no, explain fine. on that one. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got invited to ask one question and, um, you know, I just, I guess I just lost my train of thought. I didn't know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I should have done more research, to be honest. I, he's, he, I, have no, I have nothing against Milo. I think I can agree with a lot of the things that Milo has said in the past. I just didn't agree with the Islam he was talking about. Well, Emma, I have a message from Milo for you. You do? Yes, I oh, do. Oh, God. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Okay. Hello, Emma. It's Milo Yiannopoulos. You're probably quite surprised to hear from me after we had our little run-in, but um, I just had to take a couple of minutes out of my day to send you a message to wish you all of the very best. It's 3 a.m. here in Miami, and I'm struggling through uh, a throat infection, uh, but I wasn't going to let that stop me um, send you a message to say, go for it, girl. I know that you and I had a, our differences in the past, but what you're doing is important. People are not being told the truth about Islam, about what Muslims believe, not by politicians and not by the media. And if somebody with an Islamic background can help people come to understand a little bit more about what Islam is, I think they're doing a good thing. I know that Pauline Hansen, one of my political heroes, has been hoping that somebody would step up to the plate. And now you have. So I've got no option but to congratulate you and encourage you. So best of luck. And Pauline, New South Wales and federal elections. You got this, girl. Thanks, everyone. Well, Emma, that's a pretty solid endorsement. You know, I appreciate Myla's words of encouragement and support, and I thank him. And, um, yeah. I... Isn't it funny, at the end of that interview yeah. that you did uh, with him, he said, you're not a Muslim. No, I know. And that's the thing, I'm not the typical stereotype, because unfortunately, again, uh, you, you, we're pigeonholed. And there's a lot of Muslims just like me out there. I don't wear a scarf, doesn't make me not a Muslim, because it's the faith inside. But Emma, you know, what I appreciate about it is that I've been calling people, and especially after terrorist attacks and lives have been lost and everything, and I never heard anything from Muslims out there yeah. not standing up and yeah. opposing this. And I ask people, come on board, stand yeah. beside me and fight this. And that's exactly what you're doing. That's exactly and what I'm doing. Yeah. You've put up your hand to be a candidate. It's yes. not easy. You've got no. threats I've, against I've you. I've been damned like before I even spoke because of religion. You know, I, I've, I've been damned before I even started representing my um, seat of Hornsby because of Islam. And it's not about religion, it's about our country. A lot of other people want to know about the fact 
Okay, your views about Christmas Day? Yep, I celebrate Christmas. I've come from a blended family. I celebrate Christmas. We, oh my God, we have Christmas ham on the table. It doesn't, you know, it's... Well, I can't believe it. Uh, you gave me lunch up there and of course yeah. I, I had, you know, ham sandwiches and yeah. I've had... I don't necessarily eat it. I, I only, only eat, yeah, I don't necessarily eat meat at all except a good bloody rare ribeye that's my meat um but, but, but it's, i it's I, not because you're religious no, it's because, it's because you're, you're, your stomach you're that's saying, right exactly yeah. exactly i because I'm, you don't I'm, digest i don't discriminate and i don't go oh my god it's pork oh no it's not halal oh, please no <laughs> and uh, just about that if there is halal you can say a bismillah that's, you can yes, say you prayer can. over it so that's all this right. is load of hogwash yes. what they're yeah. what they're saying about yes. it and you actually um had a wine, so you poured me wine. That was I lovely. Did. I did. That's <laughs> it. It's welcoming. Got... I'm doing my duty. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was very nice. Okay, I've got one more question here. Um, Reginald Reagan, um, doesn't your comments against Islam make you an apostate? And what's the punishment for leaving Islam? I'm not leaving my faith. And I don't believe in... I don't support extremism or terrorism or... or what others do in Islamic countries. Don't know. Just I just. Why don't we touch on that? Sharia law. Oh, Sharia oh, the law. Big thing. Well, I think. Th Sharia law has no place in Australia. Not now. Not ever. This is not an Islamic state. So I don't see what the argument is. We we, we have a constitution. We we abide by the law of the land. So because I tell you what, one nation I will never accept. Yes. Sharia law in this country. Well, there is no it Sharia law have... in this country, and anyone that wants to try and, and will implement I oppose it. it, and you will oppose it because I will, will oppose not... it. I will because it's it's it says in the Quran and repeatedly says abide by the law of the land that you live in, and it's and it's um covenant uh, covenant says it's I to anyone that wants to argue that is pretty much not listening to the word of God, so to speak. Look, Emma, it's um, it's very interesting. Do you want to say anything else to the people? Um, look, I suppose for me, representing the seat of Hornsby, they've urged me to look after the things such as infrastructure, such as you know um, the the construction that's just constant going up, and 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 having having the youth drug problem. We need a solution for our, our youth out there. It's very confronting for and intimidating for other people that see this. And I think, again... Do you have escalating crime in Syria? We, well, we, we have a lot of drugs in this area, and that needs to be sorted. We have um, privatisation in the hospitals. That's taxpayers' money. For instance, Hornsby Hospital, they want to privatise the car park, yet nurses and doctors and the visitors have to pay for it, Pauline. How wrong is that? That's taxpayers' money. It should be for the people. But we're happy to take the food out of our children's mouth to give it to foreign aid. You know? How about we cut costs there and focus what's ground level here in, in Australia? We have people suffering. We have homeless. We have people that live in their car with their children. That is just wrong. You know, we, we have elderly that can't pay for their, their, their electricity or they can't pay for their, you know, just anything, their food and living off tin cans. How un, you know, unhealthy is that for our elderly? We have veterans that aren't getting the support they need. We have mental health that's, that, you know, again, terrorism have taken the word of mental health when that's a legitimate, you know, there is a legitimate uh, mental health issue with people that really need that support. There's just a lot of things gone wrong and I think our major two parties have lost their way completely and we need to bring the focus back here because charity starts at home. And that is really honestly one of the biggest reasons why I support One Nation. People say I'm taking a big gamble with you yep. and you've got to win the seat. No, you're I understand. Against, and I, I may not win the seat but I'm still supporting you. Member. Yep. Okay? Sitting minister, it's going to be hard for you to win the yep. seat. But the whole fact is, if you win the seat, people want to know: Are you going to stick with One Nation, or are you going to leave? One well, Nation? I don't believe in again. I don't believe in Takia, and I'm not going to um, uh, do what other opportunists have done, Pauline. So I'm here for our country, and that's the direction you take. And you are solution driven. I support Mark Latham in New South Wales, and I think he's got a, you know great ideas for this for, for my state in New South Wales, and I support you Pauline and the One Nation team in general because the whole it, it's it's needed it's needed in this country so you won't leave the party no you I won't leave it? the party no I won't leave the, and I'm not going to um what do they say just um 
just jump to the next thing or start an independent. No, I could have started an independent if I really wanted to, but no, I wanted to support someone that truly is representing the Australian people. I appreciate that because I tell you what, and I'll tell the people out there, if you worry about Emma jumping ship if she gets elected, Emma could have had a choice. If she wanted to push her views, the real Muslim ideology and what they're wanting, she should, the she should have gone to the Greens or the <laughs> Labor Party, not One Nation, because she won't have a chance with me. And if you think she will, you're underestimating me, because I haven't fought for 20 odd years to That's get right. back into Parliament, to push my policies That's and stand right. up for the values. Who was the one that wore the burqa in the Parliament? Who's the one who says the terrorists shouldn't come back here? Who's the one who's fighting on these issues? Myself. And I haven't worked my guts out for these years to get other people elected to Parliament to yep. think that they're going to turn it around and control me. So no one is going to do that. And as far as Takia, I've had three of my senators that got elected have done Takia on me. Those people that said they would support me, never leave me, have turned around and stabbed me in the back on the way out. So anyway, there's no guarantees in life. But I'll tell you now, and I'll tell you direct from me, I like Emma. She's got my full support. She will not be disendorsed. And I'll tell you, the voter out there, you've got a choice. It's your choice at this next election, whether it be the state or the federal election. You can choose to vote for One Nation. The only party that's really has the guts to stand up and say what you're thinking and to follow through on it. Or you can pick out these other independents, minor parties will tell you what you want to hear. So Emma, thank you. Thanks, Pauline. Welcome on board. Thank you've you. You've got my full support. Thank you, and I and, and, and you've got my full support. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>